introduction. Um, I just want to check that everyone can hear me at the back, because I know sometimes I can be a bit quiet. Is it good? Can you hear me? No. No, okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I will yell for the next 25 minutes. No, I, I know that I can speak quite a few times. Okay, so thank you for coming to this presentation, and um, it's been a great open air. Um, before I start, I'd like to thank um, some of my colleagues um, who I worked with on the Bridge to Success project, um, primarily Tim Coughlin, um, Nassim Ebrahimi, and Patrick McAndrew, um, all of whom were involved in the research um, on Bridge to Success. Um, Speak towards us, okay? Okay, I'm oh, sorry. Thank you for. Okay, so um, to begin with, I just wanted to give you a, a quick overview of the, of the OER Research Hub project, which I'm working um, on at the moment, um, and in which Bridge to Success, which is the project that I'm going to be talking about, is one of the collaborations that we're looking at. So, as you may have already um, uh, heard, we're investigating the impact of OER on learning and teaching practices. Um, we work collaboratively with a range of projects and initiatives around the world. Our research is structured by 11 hypotheses and we work across four sectors, so everything from informal learning, K-12, college, through to higher ed. And we're a project that's committed to sharing our results and practices. So all of our data will be released um, on a CC BY license. And as you may have heard my colleague Rob Farrow speaking about on the first day of the conference, um, we will be releasing um, uh, our data and could contribute to um, the evidence hub, which is part of um, our project. So very briefly about me, um, I'm a research assistant I'm, I'm on the project. I'm responsible for the informal learning sector of the work. Um, as a project, we're based at the Institute of Educational Technology at the Open University, and some of the other collaborations I work with include School of Open, um, Connections Open Stacks, um, and I'm also doing some work with the co-pilot librarians and with a colleague, um, we're working with Sia Buller, um, Open Textbooks as well. We're beginning to work with them at the moment. So what I wanted to do with this presentation is kind of revisit um, the Bridge to Success project data, but also kind of bring you a bit of a follow-up. Um, as part of um, the work that we're doing, we're following up the Bridge to Success project and kind of looking at um, its ongoing impact beyond the project itself, which kind of finished last year. So, um, Okay, so so oh, one point before we start, I must apologise because in the abstract it kind of says that I will be kind of discussing an, um, comparative data with OpenStax and I was very enthusiastic when I was writing the abstract, it is coming, it's, it's research in progress at the moment, but I will just be talking about that really success, so just as a point. Okay, so very briefly, um, a quick overview of the project. The project kind of um, originated um, following from the 2009 um, American Graduation Initiative um, where President Obama kind of set the goal of 5 million additional graduates by 2020. Um, the Next Generation Learning Challenges um, took up this kind of challenge of um, enabling in increasing college readiness and completion um, and British Success received a grant um, as part of the work that they're doing. Um, the Open University worked with MIT and um, University of Maryland, University College, and Anne Arundel Community College um, on the project. Um, we worked collaboratively to reversion um, two of the Open University's openings courses, um, which were originally called Learning to Change and Starting with Math. These courses were designed to kind of um, help introduce people to higher education. Um, and help them transition more um, smoothly into this environment. Um, the courses went through as part of the project. Um, a, were reworked as part of the project. Um, they were kind of Americanized and reversioned for, appropriately for the community college audience. And we had teams of um, content experts, both in the US and the UK, that worked on the material. Um, so, for example, with the with Succeed with math, um, which is what starting with math became. Um, we introduced more fractions, for example, because they're more prevalent in um, mathematics teaching in the US than they are in the UK. Um, we developed the courses as um, completely standalone using real world examples. So, for example, in Succeed with Maths, um, we used to do code, there's a lot of interactivity, there's pen passing videos, and so on. And then Learning to Learn is a kind of course that helps people develop their personal and learning development skills. So as the second part of the project, 
we piloted these materials in a range of kind of different institutions. And I'm going to go on and talk about the impact of these um, in this presentation. Oh, okay. So just briefly, there we go in brief. That's what we were the aim of the project. So to help people transition successfully and confidently into the college environment in the US. So I'm sure as you all are aware, 60% of students when they arrive at community college have at least one developmental course, and only 25% of these people will actually graduate with a degree within eight years. Um, so a big issue um, and something that we were hoping to kind of contribute to by offering those two courses. Okay, so here's some chrysalis. Um, so during the project, um, 11 institutions participated, 31 instructors and staff. Um, nearly 2,000 students used the British Success materials during the, um, during the piloting um, phase, which lasted from I think, I think autumn 2011 until the end of uh, 2012. Of these students, 399 participated in the Succeeded Math course. 675 students participated in iterations of learning to learn. And what we did is that educators had a completely free hand with how they used the material. It was a complete course OER, but it was remixable on the Open University Lab Space platform. Um, so people could come in and do what they liked with it, create their own versions of it. They could take bits of it, maybe use one or two units within existing courses, which is why there's, um, there's this kind of reference to different iterations. And then 756 students participated in pilots which offered both courses. Okay, so just briefly, here's an overview of um, the participating uh, institutions. There's a total of two four-year and six uh, two-year um, colleges participated, one non-profit organisation, one family support centre and one governmental agency. Um, one of the really exciting things about being involved in Bridge to Success was the fact that although originally the target audience was community college students. What happened is that once the word kind of got out, and our project manager was really great in having connections and background in, in getting the word out into the sectors, is it started to be picked up and used in, in for example, um, a family support centre, and I'm going to go on and talk about that in a moment, but also in governmental agencies and um, non-profit organisations. And also one of the pilots, um, although it's not on here, um, but the material was also used within a high school context as well. So it was used across a whole range of kind of different um, environments. Um, just before I move on on this slide, um, just a note about um, the number of low income students. Um, as a project, we were targeting um, low income student groups. Out of the 43 pilots that we um, ran during the duration of the project, 17 of these we don't actually know um, we don't actually have information for, but 22 out of 25 pilot groups where we do have information, these were 100% low income students, and that was reported by educators and based on measurements such as whether people were health eligible. Um, three out of the 25 groups that we do have information for were um, mixed low income and low students. So out of the 1,830 students that participated, um, in which to success, 522 of these were confirmed by income students. Okay, so why do we visit which to success post project? So as I mentioned, it's a whole course remixable OER. Um, as I also mentioned, um, we initially focused on community colleges, but expanded to non-college institutions and charities and family support centres. Um, as we reached towards the end of the project, we were also planning to scale. So we had other organisations saying that they'd like to pilot the materials, um, and we were wondering what happened next. Did people kind of use Bridge to Success? Did it continue to have an impact? And what, basically, what happened next, and what kind of impact did Bridge to Success have beyond the longevity of the project itself? And it's worth also noting that um, the course was reversioned again and internationalised and used during Adult Learners Week by the Open University. And that version of the course, um, following on, I should have mentioned earlier actually, um, during the project itself, we went, um, the, the courses themselves went through um, a series of changes whilst the, responding to um, feedback that we were getting about the courses. So last summer, for example, um, the courses 
Learning to Learn was rewritten so that it could, um, as a series of challenges for students to kind of, um, to see whether that motivated students to engage more with the material. So it was internationalized again, used Learning as it learned to be um, embadged in this context. Okay, so, coming back in um, to the work with the OER Research Hub, as a project, what we do is um, we align different hypotheses to um, the projects and organizations that we're working with. So we have two key hypotheses, which are use of OER leads to improvement in students' performance and satisfaction, and then the open aspect of OER creates different usage and adoption patterns. And then there's three hypotheses which are specifically aligned to bridge to success. So the first one is that the idea of bridging, which is obviously in the very much at the center of, of um, Bridge Success Project, which is open, ed open education acts as a bridge to formal education and is complementary, not competitive with it. And as I mentioned earlier, Bridge Success was written um, for courses to help students transition into college effectively and empower them and build their confidence. And something about the Succeed with Maths course, which is work kind of really bringing to the forefront, is that it was written to kind of help students build their confidence in maths. And I'll come back to that in a bit with some of the data that relates to that. Um, secondly, participation in OER pilots and programs leads to policy change at institutional level. So again, what was the institutions that were involved in pilots, did being involved in a project like Bridge to Success have any impact on what they were doing in their institution? And then finally, use of OER as an effective method for improving retention for at-risk students. So as I mentioned, Bridge to Success pilots targeted low-income and at-risk groups of students. Oop. I think we have that. So this one, firstly, so I'm going to take us through a series of these hypotheses and just give you a kind of overview of some of the data that we've got. So one of the examples, one of our case studies, is the Family Support Centre example that I mentioned. Now, as you can see here, um, this Family Support Centre was based in an area where 85% of families are headed by a single female parent, 90% um, in comparison, I think the national average is 30%, have not completed high school and do not have a GED and 95% are un unemployed, underemployed, or receive welfare or other social services. And they use British Success materials to help um, people who were attending the <coughs> support centre um, to help them prepare for their GED and pre-GED examinations. So, the outcome of the pilots um, is, of the spring 2012 pilots, when I caught up with the um, manager of the centre earlier in the year, she reported to me as you can see, the following outcomes of the students that participated in this pilot. Um, so two of them obtained their GED, um, two people were referred to another program, some two students had to retake, um, somebody was now fully um, employed um, following a job training program, and one person dropped out of the program altogether. Um, and this kind of indicates the complexity and the complex needs of um, different groups of learners. Um, it was reported that The courses themselves enabled students to kind of help them make better decisions as they moved on. Um, it kind of helped with their IT skills. Um, the student feedback itself was, was quite positive. People um, were surprised, for example, that they didn't have to apply for financial aid, for example, to use um, the British Success Programme. Um, computer skill skills were kind of indicated um, as being key. As you can see at the bottom, there's a quote from one of the instructors, which are is as a consequence of being involved in the program, they're now able to kind of get onto the computer um, on their own. Um, there was an initial need for IT support in helping students um, engage with bridge to success materials, but gradually as they moved on, um, students were able to kind of use the program um, themselves. Can you please pass that? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Okay, um, okay, and it's also, just to come back to the point about um, appropriateness for users um, and so on, um, it's worth noting that when we were talking with the person at the Family Support Centre, they were highlighting that um, quite often users would use the um, materials for a short period, have a long gap before they came back to them. Um, and that they weren't necessarily able to continue using um, the 
these materials because of other obligations um, to use, basically there were contractual obligations to use other materials. Um, so although the British and Seth materials are always there for people to use and they're you know, definitely going to be something that's considered in the future, um, they were actually at this point in time, their funding was dependent on them using other software. Um, So, use of OER leads to improvement in student performance and satisfaction. Um, this example here is um, impact in the normal college context again, um, and an international workforce development agency um, that's been in Marianne for 90 years. Um, this pilot used um, the Succeed with Maths course, certain units from the Succeed with Maths course, um, until the end of August last year, um, they had funding up until that point, um, to help people um, complete a new required um, maths pretest for a weatherization program that was taking place. So the result of this was that we saw that there was on average uh, a 32.4% a, a improvement in scores um, we see in the second attempt across this sample. So people had already failed on their first attempt to take the test that would enable them to go on to the weatherization training and succeed with maths was used to kind of bring them up to speed and give them the skills that they needed to go on and actually participate in that program. So 80% of the people that participated in the Succeed in Math pilot um, passed their entrance exam after using specific units of Succeed in Maths for that one to three week period. Okay, um, this slide is really just to give you an idea of some of the kind of feedback um, that we've had um, about the Succeed in Maths course um, within these contexts. And, is aligned to the hypothesis which is looks at student performance and satisfaction. So a range of people kind of talking about the kind of IT issues that I mentioned earlier, you know, kind of finding that the program was kind of, that that was a challenge for people, um, but that the program itself kind of guides people through the material. So one of the things about the material, you don't have to have an instructor there. So although it was facilitated with an instructor in many cases initially, although there were purely online versions um, used elsewhere, it did mean that you know, people had that kind of intro introduction to using IT and it kind of helped them with that skills as well. Okay, lots of things going on in this slide. Okay, so um, this slide here, um, there's kind of two things. The stuff in red was kind of feedback. Um, about uh, online feedback that we received um, about the course. Both courses had pre and post um, kind of questionnaires where we were asking students what they thought um, about the materials. So as you can see, Succeed with Maths, um, we have 87% of the respondents um, would recommend the material to other students. 83% um, would like to use the materials as part of enrolling in future courses. And 83% reported overall satisfaction with the quality of the materials. Um, for learning to learn, uh, as you can see, 76% of people um, agreed or strongly agreed that they were satisfied with the quality of the materials. 64% would recommend materials to other students, um, and 22% were undecided. And the reason why there's a, there's a comment here that kind of says, well, in instances where there were lower satisfaction, um, there were suggestions from respondents that materials were not always appropriate for them. And that was kind of down to the way in which the materials were piloted. In some instances, it was um, some institutions used the materials as a kind of, once you'd enrolled in a course, you were maybe waiting to start that course. So you were offered, as all oh, five minutes are here, um, you were offered materials um, to help um, as something to kind of do in that interim period or it was offered in a, as a compulsory thing that you had to do before you were. And so therefore, some students felt that, well, I've done this before in a similar course, a student success course or a learning skills course. And so I, we think that that's probably why um, we had that kind of um, response. Um, okay, and just, I've got a couple of things to cover. I know I'm running out of time. So just to say that there's also some um, data here about competing and persistence and mastery rates from students as well. Um, which I think, yeah, I'll just move on. Okay, just very briefly, because I know I'm about to run out of time. Um, I did want to kind of end on um, 
participation in OER pilots and programs leads to policy change at the institutional level. So um, one of the uh, examples where there has been change in the way that an institution who participated in Bridge to Success is at a distance learning university, and there's a bit of a breakdown about this particular institution, which serves 92,000 students. Um, they had two pilots of um, succeeding with maths, a hybrid version and, an, and a purely online version of the course. Um, in the hybrid version, um, students kind of got together and discussed their anxiety about maths and their kind of thoughts about the materials. Um, and it was reported back to me in an interview earlier in the year that um, although there was a, basically, the instructor found it quite surprising because there was a range of maths readiness and competence. <coughs> People were coming to the course who had a much higher level of maths skills than the course itself, but they were coming because they were actually anxious about maths. Actually doing maths was, was a, a barrier in some way. Um, and speaking to another colleague at that institution, they report that it's not necessarily policy, but it's the approach to the student that's really changing, and no one's about to run out of time. So um, I just want to give you two examples of the way it's changed at the institution. First of all, um, this institution has um, instigated a, um, a scheme called Individual Pathways, where outcomes are broken down into competencies and students can gain credit quicker. So they come to the institution, kind of look at what competencies students may already have, and they don't have to take or do a course necessarily to say, you know, repeat, basically, um, uh, um, so they don't have to repeat and do a course to prove something that they're already um, confident in. Um, the second example is that this um, institution has decided, and there's been some great stuff about um, textbooks that we've heard about, um, today and across the conference, um, that they're going ahead to kind of institute an initiative that is basically looking for zero cost per course. Um, and British Success have got them kind of thinking about this, um, and what they're going to do is kind of um, introduce this many, basically over a number of years, I think it begins in autumn this coming year, is to introduce a, um, a purely um, is to use as many OERs as possible um, and offer purely online textbooks for their students. So these are two kinds of things that have come out of being involved in a project like Bridge to Success. I can vote finally and know that we're super out of time now. Um, this is just to kind of finish up and say that there's lots more to kind of say about Bridge to Success. Um, work's kind of ongoing at the moment to follow up um, about the project. Um, here's some st kind of analytics and use um, of the materials over the past few months. Um, as you can see, there's a kind of um, been a lot of use in Los Angeles, and we know that one of the institutions that kind of said that they would um, be using the materials um, at the point at which the project was coming to an end. Um, seem to appear to have done that. So we'll be following up, hopefully, with those guys about what the impact and, and their use of the materials was. And we're also going to be launching a questionnaire very shortly um, for whole course OER and trial that on the British Success materials. So we can find out a bit more about who these people are coming and visiting the materials, what they think of them and what they're doing. So thank you very much for your attention and um, yeah, thank you.